Praise God. God is good, isn't He? Amen. And He's good always, all the time. He's on time all the time. He's never late. He's not going to be early. He's going to be on time. Praise God. John chapter 16, please. And we'll start in verse 29. And I'd like to give you the title of this morning's message. Do you now believe? Really? <laughs> so two questions there. Do you now believe? Really? Okay. And so we're going to look at Jesus. Now it's going to say it different in the King James. But if you let's start here in John chapter 16, verse 29. His disciples said unto him, unto Jesus, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. There was a time in Jesus' ministry, early to mid, right up to the, to the latter end of Jesus' earthly ministry, where he spoke in proverbs, uh, parables, if you will, stories. It takes us sometimes a little bit of study to understand the culture at that time to understand the parable, the, the, the uh, proverb, if you will. And so we do, I think, a pretty good job with God's help of trying to explain what was going on at that moment. And uh, you're not going to see in John chapter 16 where they're talking about, you know, e-commerce and cell phone devices and stuff, right? That wasn't along at that time. So you have to look at what Jesus was using to uh, relate to the folks then, and most of it had to do with farming or with uh, the with the um, being on fishing industry, farming and fishing primarily. Okay, and so he spoke to them in parables, and sometimes they didn't get what he was saying, and, and there were other times they would say, "What are you talking about?" They would bring him off to the side. Privately, the Bible would say, or privately, and say, what did you mean by that? And I think it happens to us periodically. We read something and go, what? What does that mean? You know, and it's okay to, to do that. It's okay to ask God for help. But at this point, this is the latter end of his earthly ministry. He begins to speak to them, according to them, plainly. His disciples said unto him, lo. Now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Verse 30. Now are we sure that, that, that thou knowest all things. They, at the, up until this moment, they weren't quite sure, I guess, that he knew all things. But I'm just going, I'm just going by what they said. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things. We now know this, and needest not that any man should ask thee, by this, we believe, by this, we believe that thou comest forth from God. Because you are now speaking plainly to us, Jesus, we now know that you are the Son of God. Because he's not speaking to them in, pro in parables, in Proverbs, they said, in stories, but because you're speaking to us plainly, now we believe that you have come from God. Verse 31, and this is where the title came for this morning. Jesus answered them. Listen to his response. Do ye now believe? Now, however you want to put your inflection, is that how you say that? Inflectuate that, however you want to say it. He asked the question, do ye now believe? Do you now believe? Do you see what happens when I change that just a little bit? Do you now believe? And I added the, into the sermon, into the title, as I believe God would have me, that the way he was saying it, was, do ye now believe, really? <laughs> do you really believe now that I have come from God because I'm speaking plainly to you? 
He's going to move on. You see, the rubber is about to meet the road with his disciples. The rubber is about to meet the road. After Jesus makes this statement or question, do ye now believe? And I believe it's said in a way like, really? Do you really believe? And I, I, I think God wants us to ask that of ourselves. Do you, you say you believe, Keith, but do you believe, really? Amen? I believe we're getting the same question from our Lord and Savior and our Master today. You see, the rubber is going to meet the road for me and you, isn't it? Faith is going to really be put to the test. If it isn't already, it has been, I'm sure. But it's going to again. Why can you say that, Pastor? Well, because that's life. Things are coming your and I's way that we don't know about. We don't know what's coming. You only know what you're going through. I'm here to tell you, you're going to go through more that you don't know about. But he does. Listen to what he says in verse 32. This is what he's saying to the disciples. Behold, the hour cometh. He didn't say, he, he said, behold, the hour cometh. Behold, there's a time where the rubber is going to meet the road. You've been through things. I can look at each one of you and I can look in the mirror. And I can see one there. Where the rubber has met the road. The question is this morning, do you and I believe? If we're growing and maturing like we should, should we have more faith today than yesterday? Yes. We should have more faith today than yesterday. Theoretically, shouldn't we? Theoretically, we should. We're a day older. We're a day older in Christ. We should be maturing. Our faith levels should be on the rise. Not on the decline. Amen? The disciples said, because Jesus, you're now speaking the language that we can understand. You're... You're speaking clearly now. Now we get it. Now we believe that you have come from God. But Jesus said, do you now believe, verse 32, Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come. Here comes where the rubber is about to meet the road. They made a big statement to the Son of God, and the Son of God calls them on it. Really? Let me tell you what's about to happen. <laughs> Amen. How about that? How about I tell you what's about to come and about what's, what's about to happen before it happens. Amen? And he, this is what he's going to tell them. This is coming. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come. Watch. That ye shall be scattered... Well, that don't sound too bad in itself, does it? But he's not done because there's a comma there. He said, the hour cometh. Actually, the hour has come. You are going to be scattered. Every man to his own. Look at this. Look at these five words. And shall leave me alone. Can I, can I paraphrase it a little bit? When the rubber meets the road, you're going to ditch me. Woo. How do you think, do you think they were expecting that kind of response from Jesus when they acknowledged, we, we believe now that you're speaking plainly, okay, now that you're out of the parable business, and, and I'll get to this in a minute, glory be to God, now that you're out of the parable business and the, and the miracle business, and uh, out of the healing business and the raising from the dead business, now that you are speaking clearly to us, now we believe. I left that part out, right? They were talking about parables and talking plainly. But they had they seen Jesus 
perform healings and miracles? Of course they had. But that didn't trigger them to say, now we believe. They said, now we believe because you're speaking our kind of language now. And he said, really? Now that's not written in the King James, is it? But that's the response he gives. Really? Let me tell you what's about to happen. Let's find out where your faith is. Your faith is going to be scattered faith. You are going to run to your own house faith. And you're going to leave me alone faith. Do you think they were expecting that response? I don't this morning. I don't believe they were expecting that one second. I think we need to consider when we say, I do believe. I believe in you, almighty God. I believe in your dear son, Jesus. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I believe every word. And I, need, I think we need to be very careful about where we estimate our faith to be. They estimated their faith here. Jesus said, your faith is here. Because when the rubber meets the road, that's where faith is. He's God on the mountain. And he's God in the valley. Amen? There's somewhere in the third chorus. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. Amen? It seems so easy. But it's when you're down in the valley, that's when faith is put to the test. When you and I... When the rubber meets the road, that's where our faith is. Not on the mountain, not in between, but down in the valley when we are about to... Now, what are they about to go through? Why are they going to be scattered? Why is every man going to run to his own? Why are they going to leave Jesus? How come? He's going to the cross very shortly. He's going to go to the cross. And they're going to ditch him. Well, if I was there, if you and I were there, we would not have left Jesus. Well, we weren't there. They were. And what Jesus said, did that come to pass? Yes. You want to, it definitely came to pass. They were not expecting that response from the Son of God. But he, he let them know, your faith is overrated. Do you now believe? Really? We'll see. You see, the hour cometh. The hour cometh, what he was speaking about, was Jesus himself going to the cross. That's the event he was talking about. But let's continue in verse 32. Jesus said, yet I am not alone. Even though you're going to run, I'm not alone. Because the Father is with me. Verse 33, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you. Here's why I have spoken this unto you. Here's why I have just said this unto you. I'm going to explain why I just said it. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He told them, even though your faith is a little overrated, don't fear. Don't fear when you're scattered and you're running about. He didn't tell them he was going to be upset with them for leaving him alone, because he said, the Father is with me. He's reassuring them that he is the Son of God. And tribute, hard times are coming for you. But believe. Be of good cheer. Be of good courage. Does that sound like fear? He didn't tell them to fear this. He said, be of good courage. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I was reading this the other day, and it just kind of popping out over the, off the pages, and then it came... Out of the Bible and then down onto this document here. And as having the privilege to preach it this morning, I, I know this is from God. And I know it's an anointed message from God. We need to be careful that we don't overrate our faith. Amen. Praise God. 
Because when the rubber meets the road, we're going to find out. Do you, how many other people find out when the rubber meets the road for you? Everyone who knows you. Right? Everyone that knows. We can see it. You can see it in me. Is it, is it normal to have the faith knees buckle? Yeah, it is. But ask God to help you. I'm going to ask God to help me when things, when I feel like being scattered, when I feel like running into my own, that I tend to lead Jesus and try to lean on my own. I'm going to ask God to help me with that. The apostles, uh, in Luke chapter 7, if you want to go there, if you want to go to Luke chapter 7, I'll give you the verses in a moment, just a couple of verses. The apostles asked Jesus specifically to increase their faith. So there was a time where they knew that their faith was low, and they asked him to increase their faith. If you look in Luke chapter 7 and verse 5, very specifically, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. It was a three-word prayer. Luke 7 and 5, did I get that right? No. Oh, what did I miss? For he loveth our nation that built us a Oh, I am sorry. I put that down wrong. I'll have to find it for you. I'll do that while I preach. That's hard to do. I'm not like the gals here that can multitask, but I'll try to do that. Okay? Hold on here. We'll get right to it. I'm sorry. It's Luke 17, verse 5. I forgot the 1 next to the 7. <laughs> that is a typo on my part. It is Luke chapter 17 and verse 5. Does that make sense? There we go. I apologize. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. A three-word prayer. Is that an appropriate prayer for you and I? Yes. Increase my faith. Yes, yes it's appropriate, and uh, it's probably needed more than we know. Luke 7, verse 6. Let's see how the Lord handled this. Look at the first four words in verse 6. And the Lord said... There is the hint on how faith is increased. It didn't have to necessarily do with the mustard seed. That's what's coming after the comma. The hint is, and the cue is, or the clue, and the Lord said, faith is increased by the spoken word of truth. It is the spoken word of God that increases faith. There is the answer to your prayer. If you ever pray this, Father, increase my faith, the answer is in those first four words, and the Lord said. It's the word of God that increases faith. It is not making spittle from the mud. It is not the laying on of hands. It is not the anointing with oil. It is not anything like that. It is the Word of God that increases faith. If you and I want our faith to increase, we have to hear what the Lord has to say. And where are we going to hear it? From the Bible. From the Bible. Romans 10 and 17. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10 and 17. I told you that's what Brother Newcomb taught me very clearly. Keith, if you want your faith to be increased, it's Romans 10 and 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's what we should be reading. That's what we should be listening to. Well, if you're at home reading the Bible, read out loud if you need to hear it. But I believe that when you're reading it, you're hearing it anyway. But if you want to go to, if someone wants to get into semantics, then read it out loud, okay, and you can hear yourself. 
Amen? Romans 10 and 17. And I told you about what Brother Newcomb said, how he taught it to me. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing. It's present tense, continuous. That's how faith is increased. Amen? Because, behold, brothers and sisters, the hour cometh. Okay? The hour is going to come. It may be now, but the hour is going to come when you and my faith, our faith, is put to the test. And we want to be ready. I know exactly how I would respond if I got someone else's report. Isn't that easy when you hear someone else's, what they're going through? Isn't it easy to spew off a real spiritual answer when it's really not you involved? Isn't it easy to tell them to trust in the Lord? Isn't it easy to give the advice when it isn't you being shook up? But it's when you and I are shook up, we need to take our own what? Advice. Take God's advice. Amen? Take God's advice. You see, the hour comes that our faith is going to be put to the test. How many of your faith is being put to the test right now? Right now. It will praise God. I mean, it's that that will pass. There may be I, there's going to be more tests coming. Not being negative, Nelly. I'm just saying if the Lord was here, I believe God would say the hour comes. And he could tell you exactly what's coming. Do you think they understood what he said when he made that statement? I don't think they had a clue what he... They didn't know anything necessarily about the cross. He had told them. He had told them before what was going to happen to him. They weren't connecting the dots. But they made a very bold statement. Because you speak plainly now, now we know that you're the Son of God. And he went, yeah, let me tell you what's coming, and let me tell you what you're going to do. And he was what? 100% correct. Jesus commented on this very topic in a little bit of a different way. He said in Luke 6 and 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Does anyone remember James 1 and 22? Do you ever remember? Do you have a... You, you know it. No, and not to do it is sin. No. Oh, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Sorry. There you go. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, but... The Bible tells us to be doers of that word and not just hearing it only. You've heard me make this statement. We do what we believe. That's not King James, but that's what these scriptures mean. Whatever you and I feel is important or we believe is important, that's what we do. If we don't think it's important, we won't do it. If we don't believe it, we won't do it. We, can, we know that we're to forgive people. And, we, and, and I believe if God asked, and, or Jesus asked that question, do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. But if I'm not forgiving, guess what? I don't really believe that. Well, brother, you don't... No, no, yeah, buts. Don't yah but me. I didn't write it. <laughs> okay. You're, you're yah butting the wrong person. Don't yah but me. You go to God in His Word. Go to Him in prayer. He's the only one that can straighten out those issues. I'm just using that as an example. Matthew 
And I think sometimes we say, yeah, we believe the whole Word of God, but we don't. Now, there's a difference between saying, I believe the whole Word of God, and not doing something I don't know about yet. I haven't learned it. But after I've learned about something and I'm not doing it, then to say that I believe the whole Word of God and not do what I've heard, the Bible says, be not ye doer, be, uh, be doers of the Word and not hearers only. But you're, we're faking ourselves out. That's what deceit, you're faked out. You're deceived. We can't say I believe the whole Word of God when I'm not doing it. Now, there's a difference between a, a, a young Christian and a little more mature Christian because of the knowledge, the working knowledge. Matthew 10 and 38. Remember earlier I said, they, Jesus was speaking in parables to them. They didn't quite, they wanted him to just Cut to the chase. Just give us the meat and potatoes. And because you're doing that, we now believe. And he's, I'm not, I think he was asking them, really? Do you now, do you, do you really believe? Matthew 10 and 38. Jesus said, but if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is me and I in him. He told them, Believe the works. That wasn't it either? No. Nope. <laughs> My goodness. Rich, what did I say to you earlier? Cutting and pasting from that one. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I'm going to get there for you. This is why I, along. <laughs> no, that's a good thing that you do follow along. And we encourage you. Hold on here. I'm going to find it. I know it's there. That's why I tell you. Yeah. Why I put Matthew 10 and 38, I don't know, but it's John 10 and 38. Yes, this is all a ploy to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> we are. This is a test. This is only a test. John 10 and 38. Did I get it right this time? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for... A concordance right here on the spot. <laughs> but if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Now he was primarily talking to uh, people that were on the fence with him. But it's still today. My point is, were they with him when he was performing these works? Yes, and they made the comment, even though they were watching him do the works, even though he was speaking to them in parables, it wasn't until he said, according to them, that he started speaking plainly, that they believed. So did they believe he was the Son of God, even though he was doing all of these things? According to their words, no. I'm, I am almost 100% positive this is right. John 21, verse 25. Let's see where we go. I am almost positive this is correct. It's the last verse in the book of John. St. John, I guess. Would be the way to help. I don't even dare to read it right now, but I'm going to try. And there are also... You got it. I got it? Woo! I got a thumbs up. John 21 and 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. The which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. You and I can read in those four Gospels everything he did, and there was a lot. But John records that if they had written everything down, the world itself could not have contained the books. They, how can we say it this way? The disciples seen Jesus do a lot. They seen a lot. They knew that he was speaking in parables. 
but they didn't say they b really believed until he st started speaking plainly to them. Well, brothers and sisters, we've experienced a lot in our lives what God has done too. And we've seen a lot that God has done in other people's lives. We've got God's Word. We've got the parables that are, can be explained. We've got the words of Jesus that are plainly spoken. Amen? So where should our faith level be? Amen? So the question is, what about us? What about me when the rubber meets the road? It says this in James, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Your faith is going to be tried by who? God. He's not going to tempt you and I to sin. That's not God. That's not God. He's not going to tempt us to sin. That's because he, he, he can't be tempted and he doesn't tempt any man, the Bible says, or woman. But he is going to try, test our faith. The question is, how are we going to do next time? Behold the hour coming. The trying of our faith. We may be saying we believe that he is the son of God. We may be saying I trust you and only you. But behold the hour coming that your faith and mine is going to be tested and tried. Get ready. Amen? Amen. It's coming. <clears throat> it's coming. Think it not strange. It's some fiery thing, right? It, 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 you, none of us here are exempt. None of us. Have you been exempt yet? Of the trying of your faith? Have you not been tried at all? None of us are exempt. And as we say, we really believe to God. We, yeah, I believe. Let's, let's do that in a cautious, all right? Let's do that in a, in a little more cautious way than what the disciples did. Because they got gently, what? They got gently rebuked for that. Let us be careful. Amen. Continue to grow in the things of God. When the hour cometh, and I'm about wrapped up, if you go to Proverbs, uh, th the third proverb, Proverb 3. I say chapter 3, but it's the third proverb. We'll close here, if you can give me five more minutes. Brothers and sisters, the hour comes. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5. This is start off with trust in the Lord. Yep. Amen. Two in a row. <laughs> Woo. Glory to God. The Bible tells us who we are really to put our trust in and who we're not to put our trust in. And this is where most of us, I believe every born again believer, fails from time to time. And God would have us to fail less often, that's all. This is, where we, this is where we miss. When the hour comes and our faith is being tried or tested, the Bible says, verse 5 in Proverbs 3, Trust in the Lord with what? All thine heart. And lean not what? Unto thine own understanding. Don't lean, we're not to lean on ourselves. We're not to lean, we are to lean on God, not lean on ourselves. Look at verse 6. The Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. All the good times, and guess what? All the hard times. And he shall direct thy paths. Verse 7. Be not what? Wise. Don't be wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. 
the, the, the evil here that is being spoken of is not trusting God. That's the evil. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Being wise in thine own eyes is evil. Uh, can, well, I'll say it this way. It's sin. Can we say it that way? Being wise in our own eyes, leaning on our own understanding, is sin. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear God's word. Reverently fear. And depart from evil. The worst sin that can ever be committed is not trusting God. Unbelief. Not trusting God's word. Not believing God's word. Unbelief unlocks every other sin imaginable. It's the one sin that puts a person in hell. Jesus said that. They have not believed in the Son of God. That's what in James, uh, excuse me, John chapter 3 verse 18. Jesus tells you who goes, who is condemned. It's always about unbelief. You and I, so is it possible for a believer to not believe? Yes, yes it's, a, it's possible for a believer to not fully trust God and His Word. Lord, help us today. Increase our faith as we go and hear Your Word, not just on a Sunday morning or Sunday night, but on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every time, every day that we get into Your Word. Increase our faith. Help us to be doers of the Word, Lord. Help us to really understand. So that when we hear from You, do ye now believe, really, that we'll be able to stand and say to you, Almighty God, to my best ability I do believe. <laughs> and thank you for understanding who I am, Almighty God. Thank you for loving me in spite of me. Praise God. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I pray that these words encouraged us a little. Maybe had us to reflect a little bit.